will demonstrate practical CNC wood joinery. And by practical, I mean that there will not be any need for special jigs. The material will be 3 quarters of an inch sheet stock, and the parts will be milled using a 3 axis CNC machine, our green bowl. Let's start with a simple joint, a finger joint. This joint, as its name implies, is a joint that exhibits protrusions that measure the thickness of the wood so that when put together, the corner is flush. Both pieces of wood will have these protrusions offset from each other so they both marry correctly. My aim is to make the fingers sized so that they are snug, but may allow some wood glue to be added to secure it permanently. The finger joint will not lock together unless the joint is very tight, but even with a tight fit, the joint without glue is not permanent. I'm going to use AutoCAD to design the pieces. I will make these pieces small to demonstrate the joint specifically. The joint will be 4 inches wide and I will make the fingers 1 inch each. The sheet stock that I'm using actually measures 0.755 so I'm going to have to undo this last one and actually go, I'm going to go a little bit farther than 7, 0.755 so it can compensate for the corner. So I'll use 0.757 for all of these fingers. As you can see, I have four inches of a width and the fingers are protruding out 0.757 and each finger is one inch wide. We're gonna take the same piece and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees just so you can visually understand what is going on. First I'm going to join all the pieces, all the lines so I can get a polygon. Okay, copy it and then rotate it. So the pieces will be joined like this. Normally I would put a little bit of a tolerance here, a little bit of a space between the, the fingers and make these a little bit thinner make this one a little bit thinner but I'm gonna keep it at zero for now just to see what happens um, I want a really snug fit so I'm gonna see if um, the wood is forgiving enough to be able to do this if not I'll have to add maybe a thousandth of an inch displacement you might be wondering these inside corners are not gonna be perfectly perfectly square because we're using a bit that's round so the size of the bit is gonna be about this size and it's going to it's going to be milling. These will be um, perfect squares here, but when it goes to the inside, it's going to have to do an overcut a little bit. So this corner here will be able to, or this flat portion here will be able to um, marry flat against this portion here. So it'll have to do a slight overcut to clear that corner. And this is also um, a good place for a little bit of glue to sit to provide a little bit more strength. The rounded corner also provides a relief for any stress at the corner or stress cracks that could arise at the corner. So let's go ahead and get this in our CAM program and establish the machining operations. I'm going to save it as a DXF file. I'm going to be using CAMBAM for this. Okay, I, was, I had it open in the AutoCAD file, so I had to save it as a different name. Okay, so we have it here. Can't move it because I'm using my recording software. It uses the, the command, so I'm going to have to move it the old-fashioned way. All right, I have the two selected. I'm going to create a roughing and finishing profile. And I use styles to do this, and I have that automatically made so I don't have to keep messing with these parameters finishing <clears throat> my roughing pass will have a clearance of 0 0.01 so when it comes to the finishing it'll just shave off that little bit of of material I only want two holding tabs on these so I'm gonna select both of them change my holding tabs to minimum of two okay You'll see that the roughing pass actually does two passes and then the finishing pass does a single pass, just shaving off a little bit of material at the end. You can also see here where it does the overcut, the corner overcut, and you can see inside the profile and the parameters that corner overcut is true. So this is an automatic 
machining operation that Kanban provides. So let's go to the CNC machine and cut it out. Okay, we have our stock set up here. I'm going to zero the X, Y, and Z axes. It's not imperative that the Z axis is perfectly um, zeroed on the surface. I'm going to get as close as I can. But because this is not a locking uh, joint, um, and the joints are based on the, mainly the X and Y depths, uh, where, the, where the finger joint is going to be, uh, or how deep it is in, in this direction, it's really just going to be dependent on the X axis to get the thickness right. So um, the Z axis doesn't really need to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a quick zeroing. Go ahead and zero it, X, Y, and Z. Move it up. Okay, now we're going to start the, the machine. So we've cut out the two pieces. I kept the holding tabs in there just for now because I just want to test the, the uh, mirroring of these two pieces. You can see that there's a slight overcut here. And like I said before, this is really a, a way for this sharp edge to meet uh, and not uh, conflict with that, with a curve that could have happened because of the, the end mill. And this is also a, a stress reliever. It, uh, if you had a a perfect inside corner there's a there's a stress point for cracks to happen so it actually works out really well and my shop guy actually told me that this is a good place for, for glue to sit to um, to make the, the piece even better now remember I I didn't put any tolerance between these two pieces so they're right on and I want these pieces to fit really snugly you might actually want to get into a vise and then put them together um, using a vise and they'll never come out. Looks like there's a little bit of space here and I need to press that in. So this is a finger joint. It looks like I may need to do a little bit more adjustment in the depths of these, these ends to make it a little bit deeper so they don't, these parts of the, the fingers don't protrude above these end, the end grain parts because it would be more difficult to actually make it the surface smooth um, and if we were using a, a laminated product then you wouldn't want to try to take any um, uh, any sanding off of the, uh, the, the laminated portion of it. So this is the finger joint. Pretty snug. I used again zero tolerance here so you might want to add a little bit of tolerance there to make it a little bit easier and, and have glue to sit in between. Also another aspect of this finger joint is these ends are perfectly flush. There's no difference between each one of them. So that also worked out really well. We also put this in a vise to tighten it up a little bit more. It was able to move a little bit, but not enough that uh, would make it perfectly flush. So you'd want to move this back about five thousandths of an inch. That would be half of one hundredths. Okay, so that's how you to make a finger joint on a CNC machine.